All right, matchup draft for Week 18 with plenty of scintillating games. Drama gal- Okay, not really, but there's still some storylines to focus on. Chris, give me one that you're looking at for this weekend. Well, I, I, how do I not look at just the McDaniel versus McDermott matchup, right? I think that, to me, is one of the, the matchups of the weekend. I mean, Sean McDermott, he's got a feel for this Dolphins offense. They've not been able to really go off on Sean McDermott at any point here in the Mike McDaniel era. So he's shown, wait, I know how to break it down. I know how to defend him a little bit. Mike McDaniel, the offense itself, has shown that teams, especially coaches that got uh, outside-the-box type of brain, right, thinking that way, that they have figured out Mike McDaniel and that offense too and how to play it. What is going to be the answer for McDaniel? You heard me earlier in the show. Like, I think they give up on the run way too easy. When you're running for 150 yards, uh, you know, on on 20 carries, that stat line and a lot of these losses tells me you're not running the ball enough. You're getting too happy, pass happy that way. So that to me will be a, a fun chess match to watch on Sunday night. I'm going to try to go off the beaten path for some of these okay. because we've already talked about some of the bigger games. Yeah. So I'm going to start with the HC of the NEP versus the NYJ Whoa. because for his final game in New England, could be his final game, we still don't know. Yeah. I think they don't know. Right. I think the Patriots ownership group still doesn't know what they're going to do. But we go into this thinking there's a good chance it's Bill Belichick's final game in New England, and here come the Jets, the team he coached for like a day before he became the coach of the Patriots. Will he go out with a bang? There's no way he can avoid the basement of the AFC East for the first time since his first season as coach of the New England Patriots back in 2000. But but you just can't help but wonder whether there's a little something extra from Belichick and company with the Jets. Of all the teams that could roll into Foxborough for the last game, potentially, that Belichick ever coaches in New England. Still no guarantee it's going to be the last one, but we go into it thinking it could be. Jet that there's just for a meaningless game, they don't get more meaningful. No, I it, it's it's you're right. There's some there's right, there's some draft pick positioning here that can still be involved in this football game. Uh and it is crazy. It just it, it I I feel like I got no feel for what's going to happen with Bill Belichick either. Right, so th- that's where it's it's it is a strange feeling as far as one of the greatest, if not the greatest, coach in the history of football. We're not sure how his tenure is going to end, you know, after controlling the greatest dynasty we've seen in the sport. Uh, that is that is crazy, kind of when you when you say it out loud. Um, all right, I think the one I'll go with here, you know, I, I, I'm going to go with C.J. Stroud, right, versus the middle linebackers of the Indianapolis Colts. Okay. Give something a little different here. EJ speed uh, and Zaire Franklin, who are really good football players, but I think they're the ones that they got their hands full in this one. And why I say that is Colts defense. Hey, they can rush the passer. They can create some interceptions because they can rush the passer. They don't like the blitz a whole lot, but this is a different animal. That play-action pass and the Texans' run game are both working really damn well. they got to have a big game in stopping the run and then also not overcommitting to the run to stopping C.J. Stroud, who's one of the best play-action pass quarterbacks in football. Here's another matchup from a meaningless game. Jared Stidham <laughs> going back to Las Vegas. Whoa. And there was some sound yesterday from Antonio Pierce saying, hey, we can't wait to welcome him home. Max Crosby wants to see him. But hovering over all of this, Antonio Pierce's future, there's more and more smoke about a possible run at Jim Harbaugh to be the coach of the Raiders, mutual interest there. What the Raiders are able to do against Stidham. If Stidham plays well and the Raiders lose, does that set the stage for a run at Harbaugh? Can Pierce cement his job? Can Stidham prove he's the quarterback for the Broncos next year? Again, another meaningless game that has some deeper meaning especially for 2024 let's take a break we've got one more round of the matchup draft next here on pft live all right matchup draft week 18 chris what else you got i'm going to the bears and the packers right you know my afc man crush team is the cleveland browns right it's in your face it's like screw you we're not going to give you a yard right we're going to just we're, we want negative yardage every play chicago's a little like that too 
right? And I look at this game and go, like, Green Bay ain't going to run the ball in Chicago. Nobody runs the ball in Chicago. The best run defense in football. Now, what I want the matchup is the wide receivers versus the DBs of the Bears. The Bears have an all pro corner in Jalen Johnson. He's phenomenal, right? The rookie Stevenson's really good. They're going to be in your face, man to man, against the Green Bay Packers. Can they beat them? Can they get open against them? That's going to be the interesting thing. Christian Watson, is he going to be healthy? Because he's, of course, their best man to man, uh, scare you guy. That is something that I'm going to watch because the Bears are going to challenge Green Bay, they challenge everybody. Another game that isn't completely meaningless because the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are trying to win the division, but you've got Baker Mayfield taking on the Panthers, the team that traded for him last year. Things didn't go well. And I know Mayfield has matured. He's a very viable candidate for comeback player of the year. He's got the ribs injury that may or may not impact him. I think he'll play. They'll shoot him up. As long as Dr. Needle doesn't put that in the wrong spot, everything should be fine. However, This one has a little added intrigue for me because I fully expect at some point during the course of the game, if things go well for the Buccaneers, Mayfield will do something by way of a celebration or something on the sideline that will be a reminder of the owner of the Panthers throwing a drink on fans. Ah, Some way, somehow, that's got to make its way into the touchdown celebration or sideline. We know some sideline antics from Baker Mayfield in the past. There's got to be a reference by Mayfield to David Tepper throwing a drink on fans. It's got to work its way into this game somehow. That would be funny. Very important. It would be. I hope that. Come on, Bucks. Do that as a touchdown celebration. Entertain us out there. (laughs) We got to take a break. More PFT Live right after this. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.